Hello, Tungsten Miner here. This will be part two of my mod spotlight on advanced rocketry. So you recall last time we covered basic ores, world gen, machines, how to deal with a hollow projector. Uh, so if you haven't watched that, we're gonna need that material. So head on back and take a look at that prior video. Uh, so this time we're gonna jump in and we're gonna look at how do you get yourself ready to take a trip to the moon. So let's jump in. The first thing that I want to cover is how do you make rocket fuel? So before you even make your rocket, you're going to need uh, something to power it with. And it all starts with water. Strangely enough, that's pretty much all you need as input to get going. That is going to feed into this multi-block machine uh, called an electrolyzer. And the electrolyzer, when you turn it on, will zap the, uh, oh, because I filled up my tank, so it's not actually running at the moment, but imagine, if you will, there's a little bit of an electrical arc zip zapping back and forth between there. Anyway, so this thing takes water as input into its uh, holding tank back here and turns it into hydrogen and oxygen in these two tanks. Now I'm using uh, thermal dynamics pipes, fluid pipes, to pull this stuff out. Uh, note that you do need a servo if you're using that particular pipe system because these will not auto-eject. Uh, our red line goes into a little tank uh, to reserve some for later, and I'll show you why when we get there. Same deal over here, uh, reserving a little bit of oxygen for later. And then both of those feed into the inputs for this chemical, uh, chemical, chemical reactor. Uh, and what this guy does is it consumes the hydrogen and the oxygen and it converts it into rocket fuel. So I've got a pressurized tank, which is the fluid storage system that actually does come with advanced rocketry. So if you happen not to be using any other mods, this is the thing you'll need. And uh, again, you need a servo to pull the rocket fuel out. But as that goes along, it'll uh, build up and it doesn't happen quickly, right? You can see I've got the fastest available versions of both of these machines, and we're getting rocket fuel at not a super fast pace here. So you'll find that you wanna set this up early so that you can generate plenty of rocket fuel well in advance. Uh, and that way, by the time you've built your rocket, you've actually got all of the rocket fuel you need, as well as oxygen and hydrogen. Oxygen, of course, being super important because there won't be any on the moon. So I'm now taking the rocket fuel out and I'm dropping it into this machine, which is a fueling station. This is what's gonna be used to actually fuel your rocket. So over here, I've set up a very basic, a very small launch pad. So all of these are actually launch pad bricks. Uh, launch pad bricks, and we'll turn that off. And we can see you've just got a bit of concrete, which is the uh, advanced rocketry version. I'm playing a mod pack uh, called Ad Astra that includes advanced rocketry. So this is a recipe that we're using in that mod pack instead. Uh, this will not be the standard recipe. So you'll want to look up whatever it is in your mod pack to see what this recipe winds up being. But having that standard concrete from advanced rocketry, you add some yellow dye and black dye and that will give you your launch pad block. I have a five by five section, so I need to make 25 of these launch pad blocks. That gets you the basic platform. The next thing you'll need uh, is some structural uh, elements here. Structure, structure blocks, structure tower, uh, which are steel rods, and you can get steel rods either with this recipe or by using a lathe, which is this recipe. And I talked about that in the last video, so you'll know the difference between why you want one or the other there. Um, these two things together define the three-dimensional space in which you can build your rocket. And when we try to scan the rocket and turn it into a real thing, it's only going to look in the space defined by these two elements. So if you wanna make a really big rocket, you're gonna to need to have a bigger launch platform. If you wanna make a really tall rocket, you're gonna to need to have more of these structural tower blocks. This guy here is your uh, rocket building station. I think it's called a rocket assembly machine. Uh, rocket, yeah, assembling machine. Um, it requires some advanced stuff, right? So you'll have to have found some titanium. 
um, some concrete machine structure control circuit boards so you'll have to have a precision assembler um, so this is definitely something you'll need the more early stuff uh, pretty well completed in order to go build this thing having built this thing you can see the readout is showing me how much thrust my rocket produces so how much pushing upward power does it have uh, what is its weight so how much pulling downward force is there the fuel, uh, and this is how much fuel is being used in millibuckets per second as you're flying the rocket. Uh, and then finally, what is the acceleration? Of course, the acceleration has to be positive if you want to climb. Uh, I already scanned my rocket here once, and you can see this is what that looks like. And you ask, rocket? What rocket? There's no rocket here. Quite right. And it's telling me, missing guidance computer, that is one of the many elements that you must have on a rocket in order for it to actually be a rocket. Uh, you'll also note that this is a powered machine. I've got power kind of underneath all of this stuff because it's not relevant, but you will need to find some way of powering this thing based upon what other mods you're using. If we look in this chest, we can see some of the materials you can use in building a rocket. But first, I wanna talk about this linker. So the linker is a little device you make. It's not terribly expensive, uh, which allows you to tell various machines about one another. So one example is I want to be able to fuel my rocket. And the way you do that is by linking this fueling station to either the rocket itself directly, or even better, to the rocket builder machine associated with this launch pad. And that way, any rocket that you build will automatically inherit that connection. So I'm going to shift right click on the linking state on the fueling station rather. Then I'm going to come over here and shift right click on my uh, rocket assembly machine. Now it says linked successfully. So any rocket I build is going to get fueled from this guy here. Now there's a whole bunch of other things that you can link uh, to your rocket assembly machine, various kinds of hatches and stuff. I'm not going to talk about those this time because all we're trying to do is go to the moon and none of those will be relevant for, for this particular mission. However, in future videos, we'll get into that uh, when we start talking about um, asteroid missions and gas collecting missions and all sorts of other things. Okay, let's build the rocket. So in here, I have a liquid fueled engine. There are two different kinds. There's the advanced rocket engine and there's this liquid fueled engine. Uh, recipe for this one is pretty straightforward. You do need some titanium, so that might be a challenge early on, but steel, titanium, at this point, you should have those pretty well in hand. You'll need the arc furnace for that. Advanced rocket engine, basically the same formula, except you need titanium aluminide, so you're going to be doing some mixing of ores with whatever your mod pack provides. Uh, electric arc furnace, totally capable of doing that. And titanium iridium alloy. Um, Iridium is extraordinarily rare in the overworld. Now, you can get it from other places, but of course you can't get to those other places just yet because you haven't built any rockets. So chances are you're not going to be building this advanced rocket engine until you've done some exploring off-planet. Um, in I think in the uh, vanilla advanced rocket mod, the only place to find Iridium is in asteroids, for example. There won't be any in the overworld. The mod pack I'm running, there's a little bit to be found in the overworld, but so rare that you may as well not be there for this purpose. Moving on, liquid fuel tank. Of course, your rocket's going to need fuel, right? Your engine needs fuel to burn, and this is where you're going to put it. Um, basic steel structures, nothing too complicated here, but you're probably going to need a bunch of these, so get used to making some steel. Uh, your rocket's going to need a guidance computer. This is expensive. Uh, so you're gonna need some eyes of ender, you need basic circuit plates, which requires gold. There's lots of redstone involved, uh, more titanium plates. Uh, and of course, all this uses the precision assembling machine. So guidance computer is gonna cost you, but you definitely need one. You can't have a rocket without it. Uh, seat, this is just three pieces of wool, nothing fancy. And I choose to fill in the gaps in my rocket with structure towers, but you can literally use any block at all. Anything you want. Could be wood planks, right? It <laughs> really doesn't matter. Um, however, I feel like this looks sort of rockety and kind of makes a certain amount of sense. One thing to bear in mind though is every block you add to your rocket adds 
mass, which means more fuel, which means less acceleration and so forth. So you kind of do want to keep the number of blocks to a minimum. Finally, uh, you're going to need one of these planet ID chips. And this is so that your rocket knows where to go. And you're going to stick this in your guidance computer so that you can program it and tell it where you want to get to. Uh, just some basic circuits and a satellite ID chip, which is itself just a basic circuit. And this is produced by cutting on your cutting machine a basic circuit plate, which you can make in your precision assembler like so. And of course, silicon wafers are from silicon bulls, which are from silicon itself, which comes out of your arc furnace. Okie dokie. So now let's build a rocket. If you put down just an engine and you ask this thing to scan, do 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 do, it's gonna look at this and it's gonna say, guess what? No guidance computer, because there is no guidance computer. What if I put a guidance computer just over here, like in a weird place, and I scan again? Now it can't complain there isn't a guidance computer, because there is not enough fuel capacity. So as you keep scanning, and I won't put you through the TDM of finding all of the possible errors, you're gonna wind up with um, a whole bunch of different things that can go wrong, basically. And every time it's gonna be in a little yellow message down here, and you're gonna to have to work out, well, why is it that what I've got is not working out as I would like it to? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and build what I have already tested and know is a workable, uh, version of a rocket. So I start off with three engines. I'm going to add nine tanks and I'm going to put a uh, structure block down here and a structure block down there. Drop my guidance computer in the middle and put my seat right on top if I can manage not to fall down. Okay. So not too, too bad, not terribly expensive, pretty small rocket. I wouldn't call it impressive. It's certainly not up to the Saturn V standards, but it will definitely get you off the planet. So let's give this a scan. Down comes the bars. All right, 30 Newtons of thrust, check, we're good. 16 Newtons of weight, check, we're below the line, that's awesome. Fuel, three millibuckets per second, and that's above the line, so we're in good shape here. Uh, this means we're going to have enough fuel remaining to get back from the moon. <laughs> if we're above this, if we're below this line, we won't have enough fuel to achieve uh, orbit. And if we have too little fuel, we won't be able to get back from the moon. But this is all totally fine. And finally, uh, what we really wanted to know, of course, is that the acceleration is positive. Barely, right? So we're right on the cusp. We might want to have a little more thrust here or get some weight off it. Or, you know, you can trade off different things in order to achieve that. But we've got everything we need, so let's build this rocket. So change to red bars, gonna scan again. And what's gonna happen, you'll notice, is it jumps. Well, what's happened here is that this is no longer a separate collection of a bunch of individual blocks. This is now an entity, like a boat or a horse. It's a vehicle that you can hop on. You can also see very, very faintly this single little tiny thread of a line that goes back to our fuel loader and you can even oh i think that's the chemical guy in the background there uh, all right so now um we've got our fuel loading and you can see that connection because we did that little linky thing in the past right that connected those two guys and before we hop on this rocket and disappear into space there's probably a few things that we should take care of. First, we need to have a chip. So I'm going to shift right click on my rocket so I don't hop on the rocket, but I can get the little interface that allows me to interact with it. So here I can select my destination. We'll do that later. I can disassemble it. So this brings it back to its individual parts so that you can add more parts, remove parts, move things around, reconfigure your rocket. Uh, and then you can also access the various inventories that you've built into your rocket. At this point though, the only inventory I have is my guidance computer because I haven't put any HS on there nor anything else that has an inventory. So I'm gonna click on this guy and drop my Planet ID chip in there. And that's what's gonna allow us to uh, set a destination and figure out where we wanna go. But before we leave, we probably need a spacesuit. 
and my spacesuit has gone missing for some reason. Yep. All right. Well, we'll just grab another one. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So you're going to want a space helmet. You're going to want some space boots. You're going to want a chest piece and you're going to want some leggings. Now, these work just like regular armor, right? There's nothing magical or special or different about them. And if this is all you build, it's completely useless because you have no place to store any oxygen and you will just wind up suffocating as soon as you get to the moon. So you need to build yourself a suit workstation. And there's a whole bunch of things you can add to your suit. So let's just talk about some of these uh, briefly. So if I take my suit chest piece, you can see it has places to put oxygen tanks. So I'm going to grab, uh, see I've got a low pressure one, a regular pressure one, a high pressure one, and a super high pressure one. I forget exactly how many buckets of um, oxygen each of these can hold, uh, but needless to say, the higher pressure ones store more oxygen than the lower pressure ones. So I'm just going to stick two of those in there. And then when I move it back onto my body, on my inventory, it brings along those extra things. And you can see in the tool tip, it's telling me, hey, you've got these other things on there. Uh, if I put my leggings in the suit workstation, it doesn't give me any clues, but the thing that you can put on there is these bionic leg upgrades. Um, these just make you go faster. Um, there's really nothing else going on there, just a little bit faster walking speed. Your suit boots, you can add on these padded landing boots, which give you um, no fall damage, basically. Uh, and when you go up on the moon, of course, remember, 1-6 gravity, and there's a lot of cliffs and precipices and things that you can very easily fall off of, especially when you're bounding around, making such huge jumps in, in such low gravity. So having those padded landing boots is really, really helpful. Uh, the other thing you can add here is a jetpack. And if you add your jetpack, then you're going to want a tank for hydrogen as well, uh, because hydrogen is what powers the jetpack. So we'll drop that off. And then finally, on your space helmet, uh, you can add your hover upgrade so that your jetpack will just keep you still, like in uh, creative flight. Flight speed control upgrades, so you can go a little bit faster. Uh, you've got your anti-fog visor because some planets have a really thick fog that's hard to see through and this will let you see through it more easily. And then finally, a beacon finder. Um, there's an object somewhere in here that uh, allows you to set up a beacon so you can always find your way back home again to your rocket because of course you don't want to become stranded on an alien planet. Okay, so now I've got my spacesuit on and if I move back to survival mode, we can see that my HUD has been upgraded to show all of the different items that I have added to my suit. And if I take them off, they'll go away. And if I add others on, they'll come back. So we can also see above my HUD, uh, down on the bottom center, that I've got an oxygen meter, which is currently empty. But if I step on this gas pad, it's going to pull some of the oxygen out of the gas charge pad and put it in my suit and it's gonna draw it from whatever other system is available. Uh, and it looks like I forgot to give myself, do, 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 crescent hammer, uh, there we go. So that these guys can now feed into the charge pad. So this is replenishing the supply of oxygen in here. And of course the oxygen and the hydrogen come from the processes that we looked at for making fuel earlier. So you're gonna to wanna to set some of these aside there we go. So now my hydrogen tank likewise is full. Um, I'm not exactly sure how it decides which of these tanks is storing which of these things. Uh, I have a hypothesis that the tank that's after the jetpack itself is um, the one that gets the hydrogen, but I don't actually know if that's true or not. I'll have to do some more homework. Uh, okay, so now we've got a fully functioning suit. What else do we need to bring with us to the moon? Well, in here, I've made a few suggestions, but really, this is the kind of stuff that you'd want to bring with you on any adventure. For torches, you're going to need to make yourself some thermite torches, because of course, regular torches require oxygen to burn, and there won't be any oxygen on the moon, and they'll just go out. 
That's actually one of the things they deliberately built into the mod for you. Uh, so the recipe for this thing is just a stick and some thermite, and you make thermite with iron and aluminum. Uh, food, some kind, right? There's uh, no monsters on the moon to worry about, but uh, obviously you don't want to starve to death. You're going to find some moon turf, uh, which is similar to dirt, and you're going to find some rocks and ores, so you're going to want a pickaxe, and you might even find some lava down in uh, the deeper areas of the moon, so maybe a bucket to help clear that stuff out of the way. And then finally, this is an item from Bibliocraft, a different mod that happens to be also in the Ad Astra mod pack, which allows you to set a, uh, a specific waypoint. So I just kind of shift, right click, current location, and I'm just gonna give this a name and accept. And now this thing will always point to that spot where I set this originally. So uh, Advanced Rocketry comes with a beacon. You can set one of those up. This is actually kind of a cheap and easy alternative to using a beacon. And now we're ready. We've got fuel, we've got oxygen, we've got our jetpack, we've got hydrogen, we've got our spacesuit, we've got food, we've got a uh, compass, we've got some torches, pickaxe, shovel, bucket, we're all ready to go. So let us right click on our rocket and we are now mounted sitting on top of this thing. Way up here. And we can press space to take off. Uh, I'm gonna press F8 which brings me back into the rocket's interface and select a destination because we didn't have one before. So in this screen, at the moment, we've done no exploring of the universe. We've not found any other planets. We've not done any of that kind of research, which means, of course, the only bodies that we know about are Earth and the moon. So let's go to the moon. Select my destination and press space to take off. Seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one, and lift off. So I happened to record this on the same day that the SpaceX uh, Crew Dragon was first shot off into space. So a momentous day for liftoffs. So here we are flying off and we can see over on the left I now have an altitude meter, which is now quickly climbing up into the sky. I have a velocity meter, which is now approaching our maximum velocity upwards. Um, the red area at the bottom of that meter is for descending, so we'll be having a maximum velocity downwards. And then finally, a fuel gauge. And hopefully that doesn't dip too much below midway or we won't be able to come back home. So as we get higher and higher, we get above the atmosphere. Looks like the sun is directly overhead. I've kind of locked the time for the sake of this being a demo video. And now we're changing dimensions because that's how different bodies get represented. And since it's the first time we're going, uh, we're going to have to load the terrain. So I'm hitting space to auto descend. And we are now going to be heading downwards toward the surface of the moon. Now I have had problems with the version of this that I am using, my particular setup, where it doesn't actually show the animation for descending to the moon. So it's entirely possible that, uh, yeah, my altitude is coming down, nothing seems to be changing, um, that I'll have to just take a quick pause and uh, I'll just log out of my world and I'll log back in again once I've landed. And that seems to clear things up and I wind up uh, just sitting on top of my rocket as I'd expect to be. So here we are, altitude almost down. Velocity is creeping back towards neutral, so zero. And we've still got plenty of fuel because of course it doesn't take nearly so much fuel to get off the moon with its lesser gravity than it did to get off of Earth. Okay, so this is the bug that I ran into. I'm just going to uh, take a pause for a moment and I will be right back. Okay, I'm back again and we are on the moon. So as I'm sitting here on my rocket, I can kind of look around and see I've landed in a uh, kind of wide, shallow area here. I'm just gonna hold down shift and jump off of my rocket. We can see how slowly I jump down. 
All right, so how high can you jump? Quite high on the moon, as it turns out. And we can already see in that little outcropping of rock why it is you bother to come all this way. <laughs> so we can see already there's lots and lots of ore on the moon. Now this ore gen is from the Ad Astra mod pack, so I very deliberately made uh, the moon a fairly lucrative place to come. <laughs> Space mushrooms, that's unexpected. Um, because, yeah, it's a lot of bother, right? There's a lot of expense in setting all this stuff up if you're in a survival world. So uh, better make it worthwhile to come out here. So uh, lots of mining to be done. There's plenty of iron. There's plenty of aluminum. Uh, I don't see any in sight, but there's also plenty of titanium, uh, at least as part of the Ad Astra mod pack. So as I'm bouncing around here, I'm uh, slowly using up uh, oxygen, although actually I'm in creative mode, so I'm not. If I were in survival mode, no, I am in survival mode, so I am using up oxygen. It's just, it, it goes pretty slowly. Um, with the tanks that I have, I probably have like a couple of hours worth of oxygen. Um, I think if you have just one of the lowest grade tanks, it gives you maybe 15 to 20 minutes-ish, uh, maybe up to a half an hour. I forget exactly what the right number is. Um, but here we are on the moon and, uh, we can explore around, we can go mining, we could set up a moon base. There's just so much you could do, but for the moment, uh, let's call this mission a success. And, uh, like Apollo 11, after our very brief moonwalk, we'll hop back on our rocket and go back home. Unlike Apollo 11, we actually brought our entire rocket to the moon and we're going to bring our entire rocket straight back home again. So... Our destination currently is Luna, which is not what we want. So I'm going to press my F8 button and I'm going to select a new destination of Earth. And now we're ready. And seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and lift off. So as you can see, we're getting uh, higher faster and we're using up a lot less fuel. Ultimately, what's going to happen is we're gonna make it um, back up into space. Here we are. Yeah, so this is kind of the opposite of the animation we didn't see on landing. Uh, I've had mixed results with uh, getting the same animation to work when coming back to Earth. Uh, but eventually we'll get high enough up, we'll change dimensions again, and then we'll start a landing sequence. Um, your landing is going to be in exactly the same location on the same landing pad that you took off from. So wherever that is, you're going to wind up going straight back there. There are ways to redirect where a rocket goes in orbit. Uh, so you can go to different docking stations for different space stations, for example. Uh, okay, so here we are heading down again. And it looks like we might get the animation to work this time. Like I said, it's a little hit or miss for me personally on my setup. Okay, here we are heading down. Starting our retro fire. Breaking back through the cloud layer. Of course, being a super flat world, there's not a whole lot to see down there, even if we could see through all the smoke. But as you can see, we're coming right back to our little demo set up here and exactly on the same launch pad that we took off from. Okay, so having landed, I just shift to step off and looking at my fueling station, it's now going to be refueling my rocket here. There we go, yep, so creeping back up. So it automatically linked itself back to all of the ground services that I had it linked to. In this case, just the fuel loader, but if you had other things, they would also reconnect. And uh, there we are. We are back safe and sound from our journey to the moon. And that's about all that I have to cover for today. Um, 
So, quick review. Uh, we started off by talking about fuel. So you take your water, run it through your electrolyzer, that gets you oxygen, hydrogen, you want to set some of both of those aside uh, so you can power your suit. But then the rest of it is going to get dumped into this chemical reactor, which produces your rocket fuel. Rocket fuel is going to get stuck into your fuel loader, which you link to your rocket assembly machine, uh, which has to be positioned above and directly adjacent to your launch pad. Your structure tower needs to be at the same level as and uh, adjacent to your launch pad. The positions of both of these matter um, pretty significantly. So remember exactly what you're seeing here. This one is one level above, and this is at the same level as your launch pad. Launch pad defines the area where your rocket can be built. The height of the tower uh, is how tall your rocket can be. And you use any blocks at all to build your rocket, but you definitely need to have at least uh, some engines, some fuel tanks, a guidance computer, and if you want to travel on your rocket, a seat. Everything else is optional. How you put it together, what kinds of things you have in there, all of it. You also need a space suit. So you got your helmet, you got your chest piece, your leggings, your boots. Uh, you can add a bunch of things to them. At a minimum, you should probably be adding some tanks so that you can store, ah, uh, yeah, my guess was right. Uh, so anything afterwards is hydrogen. Um, at a minimum, you want to have some tanks for oxygen. Uh, if you have a jetpack, you'll need a tank for hydrogen. But there's a whole lot of other things. The one other thing I think probably you'll want right away are these padded landing boots because uh, they are super, super handy in avoiding uh, accidental falls. Um, apart from that, you're going to want to... Uh, that's, oh, huh. all right, I'll explain this. I took the padded landing boot extension out of the suit workstation, but it's not a set of boots, right? It's just an extension. So I need to get the space boots out. There we go. Um, in order to fuel this thing up, you're going to need a gas charge pad, which has some oxygen and has some hydrogen so that you can power up both of those things. Along with all of those things, you'll want to think this is an adventure you're going to go on. You're going to be away from your base. Make sure you've brought up some supplies so that you can survive while you're up there. And that is pretty much all you need to know for making your first moon mission using advanced rocketry. That's it for now. Talk to you later.